that was that was some good eating, some good fellowship. And uh, DJ Bob here did a good job providing entertainment, especially if the song he started out with, just top of the line, good entertainment. We kind of went downhill from there. Started out with Rocky Top, and then in played some song about some podunk college in Alabama. <laughs> Uh, it's happened to get lucky a few times, win a few national championships, but uh, enjoy. All right, I believe everybody's seated now, and uh, um, I've been instructed to kill a little time to get video, get the video synced and everything, so we're good. All right, would you bow with me? Gracious God, our Father in heaven, how great and holy is your name. Father, we are humbled in your presence. We are so thankful that you are God. And as we approach your word, we're thankful that you have revealed yourself to us through your word. And we can come to know you. We can come to know what your plan is for us and how that we may draw closer to you. So as we study your word, we ask that you will help us to rightly divide it, that you will help us to rightly apply it, and that through the study of it, we may come to know you better and draw closer to you. I ask that you'll forgive us of our sins, that we may approach you in the pure heart and pure conscience, that we may leave this place better than we came. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you have a, one of the handouts there, if, if you don't have one and you need one, just raise your hand. Monty's standing in the back there, and uh, he'll get you one. Thanks, Monty and Jordan, for taking care of that for me. So this is uh, what we believe about Jesus. Um, a study, if you will, in Christian evidence is coming from a scriptural standpoint. There are a lot of misconceptions about Jesus. There are a lot of questions. A lot of times people have a hard time understanding the nature of Jesus what his purpose was and is, what his role in the Godhead was and is, how that he could be man and yet be God, how that he, as God, could be crucified, die on a cross as a man. And th there are things, uh, even beginning with uh, the, the conception, um, how that uh, Mary could have conceived, through you know, the, the Holy Spirit uh, to, to have Jesus as a baby. And so there are a lot of questions, and um, there, are, there are a lot of different ideas about Jesus out there. Some, uh, having struggled with the thought of God dying, would suggest that uh, Jesus ceased to be God uh, before he was, was hung on the cross, that the deity of him left the body. Uh, some have uh, suggested that um, you know, Jesus, in his death, burial, and his resurrection, there have been many theories about how the tomb could have been empty to try to explain away his resurrection, and any number of ideas, even some today from some of our friends of uh, different mindsets and beliefs who teach certain things concerning Jesus. So let's just go to the Bible. And in Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, as, as Luke begins his gospel there, he states, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of the things wherein thou hast been instructed. So Luke speaks of those things which are most surely believed among us, the things that we can have uh, a knowledge of for certainty, not necessarily things that 
you might have an opinion and I might have an opinion and we could agree to disagree, but these are things that the Bible speaks of and that are revealed through Luke's gospel accounts as well as the other three. And then he said that you can know the certainty of those things. And so there are certainly things that we can, we can know about Jesus, things that we can understand about him that will help us in our relationship with him and help us to understand his relationship with the Father and with us, and with his church as a whole. And so, as Luke writes, there are these things that are surely believed among us. One of those is that Jesus, and all the outline here I have is, I should have put was, Jesus was both human and divine. He was human, he is still divine. But he has, he has been both human and divine divine. And um, John chapter 1, verses, let's read uh, 1 through 3. And if someone would please turn there and read that. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. If you want to look ahead at some of these scriptures and be prepared to read one, we're going to read each of them. Yes, sir. In the beginning was the Word. What is the Word a reference to? Okay. The Greek word there is logos. And that is a reference to Jesus as the Word. It's a reference to Him. And in your Bible, probably the the word, word, is capitalized. Is it in your Bible? And that's because it's a reference to Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And by Him, all things were made. There was not anything made that was not made by Him. Now, what, if, if we just stop there and, and just look at that verse, and I'm going to ask you and, and, and get some reflections from you. What are things that we can know about Jesus from this verse. Okay. He was there in the beginning with God. So what is the beginning here? Okay, the creation. Now how do we know that? From the verse. Okay. All right. Okay. Nothing was created without him. By him all things were made, therefore it's talking about the creation, isn't it? Now, there's another aspect of Jesus that a lot of times people don't really think about that, that we find here. And you know, we think of God creating the heavens and the earth as God did. But here we find out that Jesus was the creative power of everything that is. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And the Spirit of God moved across the face of the deep. Here we find out that Jesus was that creative power. And when God made man, he said, let us make man in our image. That's plural. Why would God say, let us make man in our image if God, a singular individual, is creating, doing the creating. Because God is not a singular individual. God here refers to the Godhead as we speak of it, which includes God the Father, Jehovah, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One person, three personalities, three three beings that make up one. Now, we have a hard time with that because our finite minds, you see, we can, we can only know and understand what we've experienced. 
or what has been taught to us. And our only experience is with individuals, with persons, is that one person is, is, is simply that, that one. It, that they, it, it can't be a matter of three persons in one. But here we find Jesus as the creative power in creation. God said, let us make man in our image. The Spirit of God moved across the face of the deep. We have a reference to all three persons of the Godhead here in creation. How about 1 John chapter 1 and beginning at verse 1? Okay. Sometimes it helps, and, and usually when we're talking about God, we almost always, the illustrations that we use will fall short of, of the, you know, the full truth, but it helps, doesn't it, to, to, to be able to wrap our mind around something that, that gives us, and, and, and so that may be a good help for you. 1 John chapter 1, and beginning with verse 1, uh, someone read, if you would, uh, the first three verses. First John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Okay, so here it's made very clear, isn't it, that the word is referring to Jesus. Uh, not hardly as clear in, in, our, in our reference of John 1, 1, and being it was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. I mean, it, you know, it, it's there. But here it's, it's very clearly stated that the word, the logos, that is being spoken of is Jesus. Going back to, just for a moment, um, uh, let's, let's get one more thing from here, then we'll go back to John chapter 1. And um, there is a, in verse 2, a manifestation of this life. The life was manifested. We have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. So here again is a reference to Jesus, the Word, being with the Father. Now, in, in this case, it is he's with the Father and he came, was manifested to us. We've touched him, we've seen him, we've handled him. We know that God existed in human form. Now, that's amazing. I don't know if you've ever really tried to wrap your mind around that, but that is absolutely amazing. And, and a lot of people really struggle with this. They struggle with the idea of God because, because, you see, we have these concepts of what, of what deity ought to be. And, and so people say, well, deity could never become flesh. Deity could never become weak. But the Hebrew writer tells us that Jesus was weak, uh, and not, not that he was weak himself, but he, he had the same, the same temptations that we face. He, he bore the weakness of human flesh just like we do. Now, he overcame it, and, and he never sinned. But that concept is, is hard, and so as a matter of fact, um, when, when John is writing here, and what we're reading here in 1 John, he's really uh, dealing with those who really struggle, the Gnostics. He's dealing with those who struggled with the idea of God uh, coming in the flesh, and, um, and so a lot of what he's writing there is answering them. Going back to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. One more point from that last statement. Without Him was not anything made that was made. 
does that necessarily, uh, does that only include the physical things of the world? Without him, they're not anything made that was made. And, um, you know, the, everything that has been made, Jesus was the creative power in that. Look at verse 14. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Going back to the same thing that uh, John had written in 1 John chapter 1. Uh, the, the manifestation of Jesus, His incarnation in the flesh, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that makes it very clear that His reference here is to Jesus. Any other thoughts, questions on that? Let's, yeah. Yes. Christ and, and God are literally the same being. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and here again, there's there's a distinction. There is Jehovah God the Father, who is a different personality than Jesus the Son of God. But the answer, I think, ultimately is yes, that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the same being. They're different personalities, different manifestations, if you will, of, of the same thing. Uh, a case in point uh, to look at is the baptism of Jesus. Uh, if you, to see the, uh, the, the as, as far as the difference, the personalities. Um, you have Jesus coming up out of the water. You have God the Father speaking, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And you have uh, the Holy Spirit coming down like as unto a dove. And um, but uh, Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. The Father and I are one. Right? Well, see, here, here's the problem. Here, here's, here's what we're trying to do. We are trying to take a, a concept that we can't fully understand and put that concept into terms that we can understand, and, and, and so we struggle with that. Um, when um, Jesus was asked to show us the Father, and he said, have I not you know, been with you? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now, there are, there are um, lots of, of, of ways that we could kind of draw some analogies. For example, Joshua, I'm often told, is a spitting image of me. Right? 
And uh, you know, people, people say, well, you can't deny him. He's a spit image of you. And so somebody might say, as a matter of fact, Stacy kind of has a habit of if she's with the boys and they go to a restaurant and I'm going to meet them later, she will tell the person who's seating them, look at Joshua. And then when a bigger version comes in with the mustache, that's the, that's the guy we're waiting on. Right? Now, there, there is a way that people say, well, if you've seen Joshua, you've seen Michael. But I don't think that's the way it's being used here. And I think we, I, I'm following you, and, and, I think, I, and I think you and I are, are in agreement with using different terms. I wouldn't say that Jesus is simply a representation of God. Um, because that, okay, okay, clar clarify that for me. The, the clarify the how, how you're how you're using it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And, and 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 we agree. We agree in 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 whole. There's some differences, maybe in in the way that maybe we communicate that. There is definitely a difference between the person of Jehovah God and the person of Emmanuel. Okay? There is a difference there. They are two different persons. But um, just as there is a difference between the two of them and the Holy Spirit. But they are all three fully God. Um... As a matter of fact, if, if, if you go on down in Colossians chapter 1 in verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. All the fullness should dwell in him. Okay? So, so not, not merely a representation of God, but all the fullness of, of God uh, dwelt in him. And um, now... And here again, here's, here's the problem we have. We are trying to understand something that we have never experienced in the sense of itself or the fact that it's been revealed to us by the, by the Word of God. Um, Joe. We got a hand here. Okay. <coughs> Moses saw his hinder parts, saw representation.
Right, two persons, yes. One God here. <laughs> no. mm -hmm. And, and like I've said before, if, sometimes we have to find what helps us understand and, and, and put it in terms that, that help us understand. I, 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 I kind of have a little bit of a problem saying that Christ is figuratively God because if he's not truly God, then we have a, we have a, a theological problem. Considered it not robbery to be what? Equal with God. Uh, I was about to ask that. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. 
I think that's, that's a very good illustration that we can maybe grasp to help us to understand. It's fine. It, yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's take one more if anybody's got one, then we're going to have to, well, I, I like, I like if, if people have questions, I like to deal with them. I'm, we can take as long as we need to get through with this. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I, I have a question. Uh, I have a question. Who created the heavens and the earth? God. Did Jesus create the heavens and the earth? Okay. Did the Holy Spirit create the heavens there? Okay. <laughs> And they're very good illustration again. Uh, I, let's remember, when we use illustrations to, to try to understand the Godhead, they're always going to come short. Okay, there are, there, are, there are things we can say, yes, but that's not the same. But the concept, the general idea, is a very good way to help us understand, grasp our mind around it. Understand this. You can, you can try from now every minute of, of your waking life to the day that you die to truly understand God, and you won't. Because he is infinite, and we are finite. Now, one day we will. Um, but there's, it's still good to try. It's still good to try to wrap our mind around these things because God is our Father, and we want to know our Father as, as much as we can. Um, but, you know, we, we have to remember, because sometimes, sometimes people, they, they, they want to put God in a box. They say, well, here's God. God is omnipotent. He's what? Omnipresent. What else? Omniscient. And one more. Omnibenevolent. And that's, so, so that's God. That's God is, God is those things, and that, that describes God. That doesn't even begin. That's not even a drop in the bucket. Um, but it is, it is terms that we use to try to understand the nature of God. But what we have to remember, what we have to remember, is that when we, when, you know, when, when we struggled with these concepts, and we've come as closely as we can to understanding these concepts, there's still so much more about God that our mind cannot grasp. And, uh, but, but we need to try to understand to the best of our ability, right? And so this, this kind of conversation is, is helpful.
How are we made in the image of God? Well, I just had to ask that. So, open up another can of worms. God is a spirit. They worship us, worship in spirit. Do you have something? Would you, would you raise your hand? Oh, okay. So, um, uh, here's, here's something else to kind of uh, sweeten the pot a little bit. And, and, but I think this is important in understanding Jesus and understanding the relationship of Jesus with God. Uh, one, of the, one of the injustices that I believe that the Christmas holiday has done to Jesus is to focus on his birth as if that was the beginning of Jesus. Uh, that was not the beginning of Jesus. That was, that was the beginning of him taking our weakness of flesh. Um, Jesus has eternally coexisted with God. But how do you show that? How do you demonstrate that? I struggled with that for a, a while. And I asked a whole lot of preachers. And I asked people, I asked people that if I, if, you know, if I call their name, you would know them because they're, you know, and this is, this is back when, you know, when I was just wet behind the ears, and um, uh, some of us still am, but, um, you know, and, and, and they kept saying, well, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word, uh, the word was God, and uh, somebody mentioned it uh, earlier whenever we read it, it's, in the beginning he was there at creation, what does that say about the existence of, of Jesus before creation? He was there in the beginning. Does that necessarily mean that there was not a point in time that he began? From that scripture, I don't think you can make that point. The scripture does make the point. The scripture does teach that. But here's my challenge to you. Find the verse. Find a passage of scripture. Now, I want you to struggle with this. Find a passage of scripture that definitely teaches beyond any shadow of a doubt, any question, that Jesus has eternally coexisted with God. That's your homework. Okay? <laughs> and it is there. Uh, but I, I don't think it's John 1, 1, my, personally. Um, because John 1, 1 says that he was there at creation. He was there in the beginning. But where does it say, and, and remember this, Right? Whenever you find a verse, you say, aha, it says right here that he is eternal or that he is everlasting. Wait a minute. Are you eternal? Is your soul everlasting? Did you have a beginning? All right. So it's going to take a little more than that. Okay? But it's there. We'll see if you can find it. Right. Sir? Mmm. Yeah. Right? He was there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> he, he was definitely at the beginning. Uh, and he was, he was done. I, don't, I, I want to make sure that you don't misunderstand me here. Jesus has eternally coexisted with God. 
I want you to find the scripture that's, that shows that, that demonstrates that. Okay? Mm. Yeah. Um, boy, I, I tell you what, you're... I, I tell you, oh, hey, I spent three months on that one concept, doing nothing but studying that concept. Um, it's a Greek word, monogenes, that is translated only begotten, okay, in the King James Version. And, um, but it's also translated other ways in the King James Version as well as other versions. And, um, and, and so when we ask the question about Jesus being the only begotten, then... You know, there are, there are, Hugo McCord in his New Testament translates, uh, for example, John 3.16, translates it different, differently uh, than only begotten. And that created a bit of a controversy. It created a bit of a stir uh, and a debate um, as to whether or not the Greek word monogenes is correctly translated only begotten. Okay. And um, when, uh, you know, because... When you look at those things, um, Isaac is called the only begotten of Abraham, but he also had Ishmael. And so there are some questions about that. Um, but Jesus is the only begotten son of God. He is the, the only one that was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and he is the only one who has existed in human form who is also completely God. And, uh, and so in that sense, in that sense, there's no question that Jesus fulfills that. 